Hey guys, Jason with Track Cards again. Um, in my last video, we talked a little bit about the rear suspension and control arms. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go over how I'm installing what's called the BMR Lockout Kit. Uh, what this lockout kit does is essentially takes all the play out of the rear cradle, the rear subframe bushings, um, and it makes the rear end more rigid. Uh, BMR touts uh, better handling, uh, more predictable handling, uh, improved launches if you're drag racing, um, just better overall performance. Uh, this actual kit, this lockout kit, has got a bunch of Delrin inserts. Uh, they essentially fill the voids in the bushings so the factory bushings will stay put what these do is they, they basically feed them up into the bushings and all the cutouts and into the compliance rubber and what this does is it takes all that slop out so it makes things more rigid um, yes you can go to a, a ZL1 1LE type uh, aluminum fully rigid cradle setup I know it's very popular um, the reason I went with this BMR kit was twofold that uh, cradle bushing kit from GM is really hard to get right now. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and this is easier to install. I figure most guys would install these over the, the ZL1 hard type because of uh, they essentially 80 to 90% of the performance, that's what the BMR says, and uh, significantly easier to install. And they're a little bit cheaper uh, than some other rigid mounts out there. So uh, just, I'll step through the process on how I'm doing it and um, you know, hopefully uh, uh, you guys will learn something and uh, we'll have some fun. Thanks. All right, so we got the car here on the lift. Uh, the first step is to remove this big uh, brace here that goes from the front, kind of the, the body up here, back here to this uh, first cradle uh, mount. So we got to take this uh, one, two, three bolts and then this little piece of carpet uh, right here will come out. So we'll go ahead and get that out. Okay, one thing that I didn't go over that we need to uh, mention is I've got the front cradle supported here with this jack stand. Uh, you gotta have something under the cradle because when you take these front ones loose, it'll wanna roll forward. Um, so I've got this supporting it, whether you use, if you're doing this on the ground and using jack stands, make sure your car is on jack stands. Uh, you can use your regular floor jack to support uh, the center of the cradle here. I've got mine under the the front of the differential so when I let it down it will roll forward. Um, I've already got the other side loose so that's why I'm uh, telling you that now before I forget. It's very important. I got to be safe and I don't want anybody getting hurt doing this. So. And uh, here's the first big bushing we're going to be going after. You can see it kind of dropped down um, a couple inches, or not a couple inches, a few millimeters actually. And we'll uh, lower it down and see. We've got to get to the top of this. So I'm going to lower this down here. We've got to put a little insert into the top of it. So you can see the uh, differential following here. Down slowly. All right, come over here. You can see how much gap we have here. We've got about an inch and a half gap there. Uh -huh. So now we need to uh, do the next step. All right, uh, what we're going to do now is go ahead and install the first set of bushings on the front of the cradle. Um, these will like I talked about earlier, take up all the slop in the rubber bushing that's there. Um, so in order to do that, we had to remove this brace. Um, and now we're gonna go ahead and start installing the pieces to make up the joint, the new joint. So I know it's a little hard to see, but you'll have to come to the outside over here, Travis. 
Yeah. So the first step is to just following along in the DMR instructions is install this little uh, hardened spacer there that just drops right in the top. And then you drop this right down in there like that little top hat piece. You do that on both sides. On that side. All right, so the next step is we'll raise, we want to close this gap back up, so we'll raise our cradle back up. So there's a little gap here. Back up. It's going up. I can see the gap right there. Closing, we'll get it up till it's pretty much snug. And what we're gonna do is loosely kind of put the front back together. So we'll put our braces back on. So that when we move to the back, the front will still be secure. So next step, um, looking up in here, you can see this rubber bushing. It's got these uh, cutouts in there, little dog bone looking cutouts. Um, this bushing fits right up in there. That and it's snug. Um, this washer will go on top of it, and then we'll have to put our brace back on top. So, let's see if we can do this. Slide this. If you're like me, you install the lift where the lift arms are right in the way. Washer plate install right there. And this bolt up too. Sorry about that piece of carpet there that keeps getting in the way. Wheel liner. We'll just kind of run this up in there, finger tight. Everything will be captured here, and all the new stuff will be. Captured. Let me keep these other two bolts in the front. And I'll just use this little ratchet to snug everything up. Not tighten it, just snug it up so that it can't fall out. side and then we'll let it down and be ready to go to the rear. Okay so now we've repositioned our jack. You'll notice now it's on the back of the cradle uh, because we need to let the back of the cradle down. Um, it's kind of the same process. We've got to take these brackets off, these uh, support brackets that help distribute the load of the cradle. Um, these two happen to be 15 millimeters. Um, this right here, this little red thing, that's a a tie down point that I made to put on the car. I use that for when I tie the car down when I go to the track. Just makes it a lot easier than uh, actually strapping to any of the suspension components. So, uh, it's a lot safer too. You can either make your own out of just sheet metal or if you want a set, hit me up. I can make your set. There's a couple other people out there who make them. So. Really simple, but they save a lot of time with the truck. Um, so now that the brace is gone, and what you'll see now is you see these big, uh, these are the actual bolts for the, that hold the cradle up. So we'll have to take those loose, and then we'll lower the cradle down, same thing, and then we'll have to insert some other pieces. So we'll go here to an 18 millimeter impact. Now our 
cradle did drop down about a half inch. So we can go ahead and lower it here a little bit maybe. I think I'm gonna run a stroke here and we'll hit the uh hit the rough. Handles off here so I can get the jack down. I'm access top of the bushing like that, and then we'll get the next pieces. Okay, so the next step here for the BMR lockout kit in the uh, rear cradle bushings is similar to the front. We're gonna install an insert on the top side of the bushing. Um, however, the next step is where it gets different. Uh, you have these little aluminum bullet nose pieces. Um, what these are gonna do is you're gonna knock them up into the bottom of the bushing and they're gonna take uh, up space and fill the void inside the bushing. So each bushing gets four of them. Uh, you need to apply a little grease to the nose of them so they slide up in there nice and easily uh, don't put up too much of a fight freeze them up here down here this is the red and tacky grease from Lucas uh, I like this stuff it's not super messy it's not really watery like a lot of greases uh, tacky like it says it's real stringy um, it's good stuff good clean grease so once you get those ready after we knock in those four pins this little bottom plate will go on the bottom of the bushing and then we kind of do the same thing to tighten everything back up so we'll go drop these in and then we'll install these little pins so here you can see we've got about a two inch gap uh, between our cradle and our body um, these inserts will drop in from the top and they have the little dog ear thing kind of like the other set in the front and they've got to fit into a notch so you'll drop them in and rotate them until you feel them fully seat that right there that's down you try to rotate it and it won't rotate we'll do the other side right here same thing. Let's see them drop down in there. And then once those are in place, we'll raise our cradle back up. Go care on there. We'll speed this up in the video so you don't have to see. You don't need to say that. <laughs> One more. Now we have cool. sure that you're not pinching any of these cables over here. Got a couple wire harness type things. Raise it on up. So I see the gap closed up. I can feel it kind of in the jack. It'll bottom out. You don't want to pick the car up on the lift. It'd be a bad day if you flip the car over forward. Uh, All right. Go ahead. Okay, here we are. We're going to install the pins in the bushing. Uh, I'll put on some safety glasses because I'm going to be swinging a hammer, and sometimes uh, some things fall out of the off the car and in your eyes. I don't want any metal on my eyes either. So. 
So right here, come over here, Travis, to get a good shot. Travis, my son, he's my videographer. So he does all the videoing and editing. I just talk. Um, so basically there's four holes, four little pockets uh, that you install these pins in. And sometimes some of them push right up in there, like that one. Uh, the more grease, the better. And sometimes they're really hard. Those two went in okay. Those are the final ones that are hard because you already started. Get them up in there so that uh, the next piece, the little aluminum piece, will push tight up against those so that they're not hanging down at all. So I'll tap them a few more times, I'm getting all dirty. Yeah. All right. Now we'll install the little plates. Take the original bolt. These things have are not for the bushing. They're made to on the bushing a certain way, just like that. Well, that's how you do it. We've got to put the uh, braces back on after that. So, do both sides here. I already had those uh, pins in position. And I'm reusing the factory bolts. Some people won't uh, because they are torqued to yield or torqued to an angle from the factory. Um, seeing as how this component is not a moving component like in the suspension, I'm reusing them. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, I think GM recommends you replace them but I'm gonna reuse them and torque them back to factory specifications and it's what the, the um, BMR, BMR manual, the BMR instructions have torquing values for those. So torque them to that and then um, we'll get our other braces installed and we'll get everything torqued and then um, should be good to go. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and final torque the cradle. Uh, BMR's got the torque values and the instructions here. For the rear, it says go to 74 foot-pounds plus an additional 90 to 105 degrees. Uh, we'll cover that when we get there. There's a couple things we can do with that. So we'll go ahead and torque this back up. We've got it set to 74. So it says once you torque it, you need then to go to an angle. Uh, it's, another, <clears throat> it's another way of torquing. Uh, GM is very fond of this uh, method. Um, there's a couple things you can do. One is if you have a little angle torque gauge like this, you can use it. Um, basically set it in line with what you're torquing. Um, with the sockets or whatever and use a regular ratchet and you go to the additional degrees. Um, I can use it. Um, I'm gonna, since most people don't have one of these, I'll show you another option. So luckily in this, for these instructions, it says additional 90 to 105 degrees. So 90 degrees is pretty easy. One thing we can do is mark our bolt here with a line like that. We know that's going to turn. The one thing we can do, this flat washer is not going to go anywhere because it's captured in here and we've already got it torqued. So we can mark where it can go 90 degrees ahead of this. So 90 to 100, 90 is pretty easy. So if we just go to a little bit past it, and then when our nut comes over to about that line, we'll know it's torqued to the, between 90 and 105 degrees. Uh, that's just a, kind of a poor man's way to do this. Um, if you have a, a 
torque angle gauge, then go for it. If not, this is one option. And it works out pretty good for this particular setup because you're going to 90 degrees. So, all right, so now we'll go a little bit more. Underestimated how much leverage we would need to get that extra degree, two degrees. So there, you can see that our lines basically line up. That's how we know we got our extra torque. So both sides are torqued to. 74 already. We'll do the same thing here. Mark this bolt. And then we'll mark the washer. Keep turning it. There we go. Well, then the front will torque it. The same way, except to go to less values. So, the same 74 foot pounds on the front, initial 90 to 100, the same. Uh, don't forget to put your chassis braces back on. Uh, we'll go ahead and do the ones in the rear here, since we already got the ones done in the front. And after we do all of this, since we have actually got the subframe loose, you need to have the thing aligned realigned since I have all the control arms loose anyway I'll be getting it realigned but everything has play in it so you just can't take something loose on the rear suspension or on the rear cradle and expect it to go back to where it needs to it doesn't happen usually so we need to do the right thing and get a rear wheel alignment these get torqued to 50 foot pounds so we'll adjust our torque wrench We'll do the other side. Um, the fronts are the same. We'll torque these big uh, cradle mounts to 74 foot pounds along with our angle. And then we torque these other brackets back up to uh, 50 foot pounds. And um, just that, that's the end of it. Then we have the vehicle realigned, like I said, and, um, and we enjoy the benefits, hopefully, of, of our stiffened up cradle. So again, I appreciate you watching. I hope it was helpful. Uh, if you got any questions, hit me up down below and uh, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks.